Your Excellency, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you so much. Nice to have you here. Uh, the U.S. Embassy, together with the EU delegation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, has organized meetings with political parties in this country with the aim of reaching an agreement, agreement about the election law. However, it seems there is no, there is no consensus in sight. What seems to be uh, the biggest obstacle here? Why is there no deal? Why is there no agreement? I think the answer is political will. We need parties to have the courage to come together, to compromise, um, and to find real solutions. There are solutions. There are ideas on the table that are valid responses to the Lubitsch case that came out of the Constitutional Court that help address questions like the Mostar elections, the Serb caucus in the House of Peoples in the Federation. There are solutions for all of these issues. What we need are political dialogue and political will. We don't know a lot about these solutions, actually. Uh, international community has offered few solutions on how to change election law. First of all, the international community has not offered models. Last week, Bosnia and Herzegovina submitted 20,000 pages of responses to the European Union. And this is a country that needs to be independent, self-governing, all of the things that Europe looks for in a member state. And so the United States and the European Union are convening meetings, facilitating both individual meetings with parties and group meetings between parties for local political leaders to devise solutions. And they have. I don't think that they're ready for those solutions to be put out for public discussion. Part of a negotiation like this is to have an honest conversation about options uh, before you move into the public sphere, and that conversation is underway. Uh, and so it is the political parties both individually and together, that are discussing what solutions are available to address these issues. But some politicians actually uh, who participated in those meetings leaked the information that the uh, international community has offered some models to find a solution. And those models, as they say, are in line with HDZ. Is that correct? The international community is, number one, has not put on the table solid solutions. And we do not support one party, one side. We support the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina and their right to have elections, to have those elections implemented, to have a clear political path forward. I am here to say that it's critically important, we all know, the time frame is shrinking with every passing week. It's critically important for these parties to come together. And some of what each party wants is likely to be put into a final product. It, it won't be all. Politics is the art of compromise. Until when you're going to wait for Bosnian politicians to find a solution for this issue? Well, we're not going to wait in the wings, right? We are going to push Bosnian politicians to find a solution. In what way? I mean, we will continue convening these gatherings as we have been. Uh, I look to citizens as well to start in public, calling on politicians to be accountable uh, and really pushing not one party but all parties forward to find a shared solution. But you're not going to offer any uh, particular model for the solution? We do not intend to. Our goal is that for this to be a local solution. I would love to discuss some other topics with you. In coming days, 2,500 automatic rifles will be shipped to Republika Srpska from Serbia. And the president of Republika Srpska says that everything is according to the law. The weapons are being purchased for the police. Does the rest of the country have reason to be worried? Well, I will say that the United States is concerned, right? Um, in the case uh, of, you know, arming of security forces, obviously they need the tools to keep the country secure, to counter corruption, to counter terrorism. Um, but those should be done within international standards. And standards are normally somewhere between, you know, one weapon of this type for four policemen, one for ten policemen. Moving closer to the direction of one for one uh, is something that we think is of concern. And I think a lot of voices here have expressed that concern. It is important that Bosnia and Herzegovina 
stay within these international standards. Are you going to call the matter to be investigated? Did you already do that? I mean, it, this is something that the Ministry of Security, I understand, is doing, and this is something that government institutions here need to manage. Um, certainly, I think that international partners look forward to supporting that process. But it's been also confirmed that Federation is going to purchase some new weapons for police force. And the question is, why police force in this country needs so much weapon? Where are they going to use it? Is this a step towards militarization of police force? Well, this is a, a valid question that citizens need to ask. And this is the concern. When one of the entities, like the IRS, makes this kind of purchase, then others, as we're seeing in some of the cantons, feel the need to respond. What matters for Bosnia and Herzegovina is stability, security, the ability to move down this path towards progress, and this kind of distraction is really unhelpful. And Milora Dodik, as finally, as a, a, a member of Bosnian presidency, if that happened, how do you see his uh, future cooperation and communication with the U.S. and the rest of the international community since the U.S. administration imposed sanctions on him? Honestly, at this point, this is still too hypothetical a question to be worth any discussion, right? There are rules and regulations about how candidates are selected, and the um, Central Election Commission will make that decision when they make the announcement of candidates uh, in a few months. The United States does not support any one candidate. We are always objective. We support policies that are going to move Bosnia and Herzegovina forward. And I hope that as citizens go into this election, they will think seriously about what they're looking for in their political leaders. But that is very a real option for this country. And for sure, you know that he's very serious candidate for that position. Well, it will be up to citizens to make those decisions. Of course, but if that happens, what are you going to do about that? Uh, how you are going to communicate with the person who is, uh, let me just quote the U.S. Treasury Department's press release, January 17, 2017, in which they say, explain why Mr. Dodik is under US, U.S. sanctions. They say, by obstructing the Dayton Accords, Milorad Dodik poses a significant threat to sovereignty and territorial integrity of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So if he is elected to this position, is this threat is going to go away somehow, or he can use this position to destabilize, uh, destabilize this country even more? You know, I think that's a question that citizens need to wrestle with as they go to the polls and vote. You've read our press release. U.S. sanctions policy is very clear. That policy has not changed. So if that happens, actually, uh, you are going to expect from Bosnian politicians to fight that problem, or you will do something about it? This is an independent country, and political leaders and citizens need to come together and make important decisions about the country's future. Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.